In this video, we're going to explore factoring quadratic expressions into binomials. Let's talk just for a second about that, what that means. If we have something that's called a, that's a quadratic expression, notice that here we have something where a polynomial where the highest power is a squared. That's what makes it quadratic. It's not an equation because there's no equal sign. All we have is just this expression and we'd like to rewrite it in a new way. The word factoring, again, if you think of some, what factors something has, um, what we're looking for is th things that multiply. So we're trying to turn this quadratic equation, which is three different terms added together, into a multiplication expression where we just have something times something to get this as an answer. What we want to factor this time is into what we call binomials. And binomials, if you recall, are when you have just two things in a term. So what that's going to actually look like when we come to an expression, if we want to factor something into binomials, we could get something like this, maybe 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 5. So this would be an expression that is factored because it's, it's factors because it's a multiplication problem and each of these is a binomial because this has two terms and this has two terms. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take an expression that looks like this and turn it into an expression that looks like this. Well, this is kind of like before in, the, our last, in our last example, we were doing the reverse distributive property. What we're doing here, remember, we had that fancy form of the distributive property when we were dealing with binomials, and uh, sometimes we use that word FOIL. So if we think of what's happening here, let's go forwards, and then we'll talk about how to take this process backwards. If I had two things being multiplied like this, I would have to multiply the first thing times the first thing, which would get me 2x times 3x is 6x squared. I'd have to multiply the outside, so the 2x times the minus 5 to get a minus 10x. I'd have to multiply the insides. 1 times 3x gave me 3x. And then I'd have to multiply the lasts position. 1 times negative 5 would give me a minus 5. At this point, notice that our center terms here are like terms, and this almost always happens. And we can combine those inside terms, the negative 10x plus 3x to give me a minus 7x, and then I still have the 6x squared up front and the minus 5 at the end. And then I had combined those center terms to get that new center term here. So when we go to look at this to go process to try to go backwards, notice we can kind of recreate where the 6x squared came from. We needed, oops, we needed two things that multiplied to get 6x squared. So if we come back over here, we had a 2x and a 3x. Okay. I can see where the minus 5 came from. I have a positive 1 and a minus 5 because the firsts and the lasts are going to correlate with those numbers here. However, if you want this middle term to match, we kind of have to do some interesting stuff with the outsides and with the insides of our values. So our process that we're going to do as we go into factoring these um, quadratic expressions into binomials, what we want to do is we want to set up two sets of parentheses that are being multiplied. The things in the first spots have to come from the first term. What multiplies to get the first term? And we'll do a bunch of examples here. Um, then to fill the last spot, we are looking for things that come from the last term. So multiply to get the last number. And then we need to check if the middle terms match. So this is kind of our reverse thinking uh, that we want to do every time that we set up a problem. So find the first spots by looking at the first term and seeing what multiplies to get that. Then find the last numbers by looking at the last number and see what multiplies to get that. And then check if the middle terms match. And if they don't, then we have to go back and think of other things that multiply to get those numbers. All right, well, let's try some processes here and see how this would work. Here I have a quadratic expression, uh, x squared plus 10x plus 16, and I would like to break it down into two binomials. So I want to come up with two sets of parentheses. To come up with the first set of parentheses, I look at the first term. So I think, what could I multiply to get x squared? Well, really, that's just going to be x times x. We want one linear term in each of these parentheses. Then to get the second spot, I want to look for what multiplies to get a positive 16. Well, there's actually lots of options, aren't there? I could do a 4 times a 4. I could do a 2 times an 8. I could do a 1 times a 16. 
I could do the reverse of all of those. I could even do negative 4 and negative 4, or negative 2 and negative 8, or negative 1 and times negative 16. So there's lots of different options that we can find. Which one's going to work? Well, let's plug them in and see. And keep in mind that what we're trying to do is get the original expression back again. I need to find um, 10x when I do the outsides plus the insides. All right, so let's try start trying here with 4. So if I put 4, x plus 4 and x plus 4, notice that if I were to FOIL this out, and this is that check, it's kind of a guess and check method. We guess make a smart guess based on our first and last terms, and then we check to see if the middle terms match. So x times x would give me x squared. If I do the outsides, I get plus 4x. If I do the insides, I get plus 4x. And if I do the lasts, I get plus 16. And when I combine these things in the middle, I have x squared plus 8x plus 16. That is not what my original problem was that I'm trying to match. Oops. So what I need to do next is if 4 and 4 don't work, well, I've got to try something else. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Here's attempt number two. I have x squared plus 10x plus 16. I need things that multiply to get x, so I have x times x. Things that multiply to get 16, I'm going to try 2 times 8 this time. Um, and we'll just try positive and positive. So when I do this, if I go through and I do my multiplications out to check, x times x gives me the x squared, that's why I picked them. Then for the outsides, I have a plus 8x, and for the insides, I have a plus 2x. And then from the last, I have 2 times 8, which is a plus 16. And when I multiply that out and check, I have x squared plus 10x plus 16, which is what I was trying to match. So now I found a set of factors that works, and this x squared plus 2x plus 8 is my factored expression that's equivalent. So this is going to be my answer here. So you basically, you're just going to start with one value, and you're going to keep on trying until you find something where the middle terms match. And when you do, you stop because you found your factored solution. Um, so in this case here, um, x plus 2 times x plus 8 will get me x squared plus 10x plus 16. And that works really well. All right, so let's try this idea with another one. Here I have y squared plus 5y and a minus 24. So when I start, I'm going to make my two sets of parentheses, and I start by looking at what's in the first position. So how can I get y squared? Well, I can do y times y. Now I need to look and think, how can I get negative 24? Well, let's try some stuff. Um, because I to get 24, I can do 4 times 6. There's lots of other things I could try. Keep in mind, we could try 3 and 8. We could try 2 and 12. We could try 1 and 24. We can... Um, rearrange those in, in a couple of different ways. So those those are all good. The next thing that I notice is that this is a negative. Because this is a negative, I'm going to need one of these numbers to be positive and one of them to be negative. So in this case, let's try doing negative 4 times a positive 6 to get a negative 24. So here I wanted a positive 16, which is why I did positive times positive. Here I want a negative, so I can do a negative times a positive to get that. Now we want to check to make sure that the, all the middle terms match. In this case, we go through and we try to multiply. y times y will give me y squared, plus 6y from the outsides, minus 4y from the insides, and a plus, two, sorry, minus 24 from negative 4 times 6. And when I check the insides here, 6y minus 4y is 2y, and that is not what I'm looking for. I'm trying my middle term that I'm trying to match up here, so coming back to the original problem, I need that 5y in the middle, and I don't have it. I only got 2, um, 2y. So that means 4 and 6 isn't going to work as a combination. All right, well, let's try something else. So 3 times 8 also gives me 24. We need one of them to be a minus and one of those to be a plus. So let's try this. Here we do y times y is y squared. So that one didn't work. y times y is y squared. y times 8 is plus 8y. Minus 3 times y is minus 3y. And negative 3 times a positive 8 is a negative 24. This time, when I go through, I get y squared. Putting those together, I get a plus 5y minus 24. That's exactly what I want. I found what I needed, so I stop working. 
and I identify my solution, which in this case is the y minus 3 times y plus 8. That's the grouping that's going to get me back to that original number. Now, keep in mind, you might have done 8 and 3, 8 and negative 3, and that would be okay. Um, as long as one of the two factors is y plus 8 and the other factor is y minus 3, it's all good. Sometimes when you check your middle number, you'll get the right number but the wrong sign. If that ever happens, you can just switch the signs. So um, if this had been a minus 5y, you could switch this to be a plus and this to be a minus, and then double check it, and that'll, that will always work for you. All right, let's try a few more examples and see how this works. Here we want to get, again, we're starting with our quadratic expression. So we want to break it down into two sets of parentheses. To get x squared, I can do x times x. And I'm looking for things that are going to multiply to get negative 10. So not a lot of choices this time. I can do 2 and 5 or 1 and 10 are really my only options. This is a negative, so I need one of those to be negative each time. So those are going to be some things that we can try. All right, let's see what happens here. Um, Let's try a negative 2 and a plus 5. That will give me an x squared at the beginning. Then plus 5x minus 2x. And then for the last, I get a negative 10. When I do that, I get x squared plus 3x minus 10. All right, that's super close to what I wanted. I got x squared. I have a plus 3x, not a minus 3x, and I do have the minus 10. So if this other ever happens where you have the wrong sign, your correct answer is going to occur just by switching the pluses and minuses in your binomials. So because I had the wrong sign, I'm going to switch signs. So the x minus 2 is now going to be x plus 2, and the x plus 5 is now going to be x minus 5, and this will be my final solution. Again, you can double check. x squared minus 5x plus 2x gives me a negative 3x in the middle. And then a 2 times a minus 5 gives me a minus 10. And that was the original value that I was trying to match. So as you're going through, don't stress too much about if, oh man, I don't know how I keep changing that. Um, don't stress too much about if these things keep changing signs here. What you want to do instead is just go ahead and do the work. And if it comes out that the value in the middle is the correct number but the wrong sign, we just switch the signs. Okay. Now let's come over here to this one and see. This one is really similar to the last one. x squared minus 3x, but this time there's a plus 10. Let's see if that changes things at all. Here again, options to get 10 are 2 times 5 and 1 times 10. Um, they could either both be positive or both be negative. I'm not going to worry about it too much um, at this point, but they do have to be the same sign. So here if I start, x times x will give, so what multiplies to get x squared, x times x. What multiplies to get a positive 10, 5 times 2. Um, let's just try them both with pluses. If we get the wrong signs, we can switch it later. If you multiply this out, x times x gives me x squared x times 2 gives me plus 2x and a plus 5x and a plus 10. So I needed these signs to be the same, but this gave me an x squared plus 7x plus 10, which is way too big. So the 5 and the 2 don't work. Now, sometimes you can switch things around. You could try a 5 and a 2. Oh, and I wrote them in the wrong way. That's okay. Um, but if we'd have written this as x plus 2 times x plus 5, Notice that even if we switch the location of the 2 and the 5, we still have the same factors, right? There's still an x plus 2 in each and an x plus 5 in each. So switching things around isn't super helpful. So let's try the 1 and the 10 instead. x plus 1 and x plus 10. Now when we do this and we try out our FOIL, we end up with x squared plus 10x on the outside plus 1x on the inside plus 10. So here we have x squared plus 11x plus 10. Well, that's not negative 3 either. It's nowhere even close. So we've, here we've tried both of our factors. We do not end up getting the middle term that we need in the middle. If you make one of these positive and one of these negative, you could get the 3x like we did over here, but you won't get a plus 10. You'd get a minus 10. So that's a problem. So essentially, we have tried every possibility of things here, right? 2 and 5 work, don't work. 1 and 10 don't work. Um, the signs are the same because it was a positive that we needed to get for a positive 10. So I've tried everything. In this case, there are 
This is not factorable, I guess is the way that we want to say it. Um, when we're looking for things to factor, we're looking for nice things with uh, whole counting number coefficients and constants as part of our expression. And to get 10, the only way we can do that with whole numbers is, or integers is 2 and 5 and 1 and 10. So sometimes this does happen. You don't really know something's not factorable until you've tried everything. So um, cut, having some way that you can keep track of, I tried 2 and 5, I tried 1 and 10. Those are the only ways to get 10, so I'm confident that it's not factorable. That's the kind of thing that you really want to do as you come into these problems. All right, let's try two more examples here about this factoring thing. We're going to follow the same sort of rules here. We have an expression. We want to try to factor this expression, so we're going to try to come up with two sets of parentheses of things that are going to multiply together to get us our value. When I start, I have this time I have 3a squared. Well, the only way to get the a squared, I'm going to need an a and an a in each one. But I need to get 3a, so I could think of this as 3a times 1a. 3 times 1 is really the only way to get 3, so this is only really the only combination of values that I can have in order to get that middle expression the way that I need it to be. Now, um, now I've got 6 here as my, as my value, so a couple of different ways that I can get 6. I can try 2 times 3, or I can try 1 times 6. Because it's a negative 6, one of the values is, has to be negative, so we're going to put in a negative there, and we're going to use that to check our different options. So here, let's try a minus 2 and a plus 3 as one possibility and see if this gets us the middle term that we need. All right, so as we go through this and try to figure things out, we're going to try to use FOIL. So 3a times a gives me 3a squared. If I do the outsides, 3a times 3 gives me a plus 9a. The insides, minus 2 times a gives me a minus 2a, and from the last, minus 2 times 3 gives me a minus 6. Now, as I look and compare, the 3a squared is good, the minus 6 at the end is good, but in the middle, I have 9a minus 2a, which is 7a, which is not what I want. I need a negative 2a in here. So my option of trying 2 and 3 is not going to work for this particular problem. Okay, so if 2 and 3 don't work, I do need to try other options. Now. This time, notice that one of my parentheses had a 3a in it and the other parentheses had an a in it. That means that if I switch these numbers around, instead of doing 2 times 3, let me try 3 times 2. Because notice now, this time, here I have a 3a minus 3 and an a plus 2. So switching the order of 3 and 2 does make a difference here because I have different things in each set of parentheses. This is going to happen any time that you have a number in front of your variable. You have more combinations that you need to try because switching the order of what's inside is, in fact, going to make a big difference. All right, so we've tried our options here. If we multiply this out, I get 3a squared plus 2a minus 3a minus 6. This gets me a negative 1a in the middle, which is not what I need. So 3 and 2, I've tried them both ways and neither way works. All right, so we're going to keep going. And again, you can erase these on your paper, but keep having some way that you can kind of keep track of what you tried is a really good idea. Um, and the more the problems of these that you do, the more confident you'll get and the less you'll have to do them over and over um, as you go through. Um, you'll get a little bit better at some of your guessing and tries. As we start here to get 3a squared, 3a times a is still the only way we can do that. Let's try the minus 1 and the plus 6 this time and see what happens. This time as I go through, 3a, I'm going to do a FOIL. 3a times a gives me the 3a squared. 3a times plus 6 gives me a plus 18a. On the inside here, I have a minus a, and in the last position, I have a minus 6. So I have a 3a squared here. I have a plus 17a in the middle, and that looks pretty bad and is not helpful for what it is that I need to get my numbers uh, to work out. So that did not work out. The last thing that I can try here is 3a minus 6 times a plus 1 and see if we can get this to work. 3a times a gives me a 3a squared. 3a times 1 gives me a plus 3a. Inside, I get a minus 6a. And a minus 6 times 1, I get a minus 6. And when I multiply all that out, 3a squared minus 3a minus 6, that doesn't work either. And I was not able to get this middle term to match. I have, in fact, exhaustively tried 
everything possible in order to do this. 3 times 3a times 1a is the only way to get 3a squared. 2 times 3 is the only way to get 6 or 1 times 6. And I've tried every combination of those in each possible order and none of them worked. In this particular case, this also comes out to be not factorable. And then I would be done with this particular problem because I've tried every combination. Um, most of your homework, you are going to be able to find factors that work, but just be aware that there are cases where this does happen, but you do need to try everything to make sure that this is one of the times that that applies. All right, let's try number 10 here and see if maybe we can get something that's going to work this time. Here again, we start out with our two sets of parentheses. I have 4x squared, and I try to think of things that I can multiply to get 4x squared. In this case, I actually have two options, don't I? I can do 2x times 2x, or I can do 4x times 1x. And there's not really a good way to know if one's going to work or, the, or not. So, you know, you're just going to have to pick one and try it and hope it works out fast. And if it doesn't, then you go back and try the other options. So in this case, 2x, if we try the 2x and 2x, we have quite a few options to try to get 20. We can try 4 times 5. Uh, or 2 times 10, or 1 times 20. So there's a few different things that we can try. Let's go through and see if any of these work. Here, if we do plus 4 and plus 5, really you only need to check those middle terms because we designed our parentheses around having the first and the last things work. Here, for the middle terms, I get 10x minus, uh, uh, sorry, a 10x plus an 8x, which is going to give me an 18x, which is not what I want. So again, that would be 4x squared on the outside, plus 10x, plus 8x on the insides. And then for the lasts there, I get a plus 20. So that 18x does not work. All right, so 4 and 5 don't work. If we switch 5 and 4, notice that we still have 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 4. So because I have a 2x in each of these, switching the 4 and 5 doesn't really help. All right, so let's try 2 and 10. Here, when we do our multiplication, we get 4x squared plus 20x on the outside plus 4x on the inside plus 20. That gives us a 24x in the middle, not good enough. Uh, again, switching 2 and 10 gives us those same factors back again, so we don't need to try that again. Uh, we can also try 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 20. Let's see if that does the trick. When we do that, we're going to end up with 4x squared plus 40x on the outside plus 2x on the inside plus 20. That gives us a 42x in the middle, not what we need. So using 2x, we've tried all combinations of things with 2x and 2x as an option. None of those worked, but we could still get 4x squared by doing 4x times 1x. So let's try those. We can go back and try through each of our values again. Let's try plus 4 plus 5. When we multiply that out, we end up with 4x squared plus 20x plus 4x in the inside plus 20. 24x in the middle doesn't help me. Coming back again, we'll try 4x times x. Let's try 2 times 10. When I do that, I get 4x squared plus 40x plus 2x plus 20. That gives me a 42x in the middle doesn't work. Let's try the lat. Now, this time, we could actually try the reverse of all of these, right? If we switch 5 and 4, we're going to get a different combination of things. If we switch 10 and 2, we're going to get a different combination of things. So we might still have to do that. I tried 4 and 5, 2 and 10, 1 and 20. I guess while well, I'm kind of doing that, let's try all of these. Here, if I multiply it out, I get a 4x squared plus 80x on the outside plus 1x on the inside plus 20, and finally I found something with that 81. So 4x plus 1 and x plus 20 does, in fact, took me a while to get there, but that does, in fact, work to give me my middle term, and that is a factorable expression. So a lot of the problems are going to be much simpler, not quite as many things to try, but do be aware if you have a number in front of the x squared, that does give you some extra combinations, and you do have to think, you know, if there's more than one way to get 4x squared, you've got to try all of them before you're done um, trying to figure out which way those things will factor. They, these do take a while, take some time to practice. Uh, really, you get fat. I promise you get faster at it the more that you do. Um, so give it a whirl.